Hey everyone, so, uh, if you see me, that, uh, I try not to interact with this side of my face, it's because, uh, this side of my face, which is the left side of me, uh, hurts, my ear hurts, I think I have an ear infection, uh, so with that, I don't know when this video is gonna come out, but... The effort's here, so let's start. Uh, this video is more to answer uh, several questions. This is a minimal edit video again. And it's probably titled, Happy Father's Day, Appreciate Your Fathers. Your dads. Whichever one seems best at the time. So, this is the story of my dad. His name is Paulo Morales. He was born in 1946 on October 2nd. And for all intents and purposes, <sighs> he was a great dad. He really was. He really was a great dad. I met him when I was four years old, when I picked him up. Well, when we picked him up from the airport, and uh, he was the best dad anyone could ever ask for. Uh, I got a liking to him when I was four, of course, and uh, I don't think we were ever separate. Ever separate. By then, in those days, uh, he was a real handyman when it came to like average stuff in the house. If you didn't know, he would call someone. He had dignity. But whenever he felt like he could do something, he would do it himself. Like, uh, in the house before this one, he manually put in wood flooring in the outside because it was all just grass. And that was, that was something once he slipped on his butt, I think, there, because it rotted. Uh... One time we were playing tug of war, like I was tugging on his hands and he looked back like this behind me and he let go. That was the funniest memory because he let go and I ran to my mom. He's like, he's mean, he's mean, he's evil. He was just like that. Uh, one of the really, one of the greatest memories I had of him was when uh, uh, we went to Epcot when I was 12, uh, it was the best. We went into the actual globe of Epcot, and um, he had to ride in a separate cart because he was too fat for one cart. <laughs> and that was, that was the best day. I lost my wallet on that trip and found it seven years later. Now that's the wallet I'm using on the daily. Um, he always helped me with my English homework whenever I had doubts because we lived in Puerto Rico most of that time. Uh, he taught me how to fish when I was five, six years old. I caught a white grunt at that time. Baller. He used to be part of the army, he would always tell me, and uh, I actually have some memorabilia memorabilia of his from when he was in the army. Uh, and one th bad thing he always did was that he bought expensive things that I ended up inheriting. One thing I am grateful about him is that he quit drinking for me and my mom. And one thing I never forget, uh, on nights where I'm doing long projects, I have a mug that was actually his that I would make instant ramen in. And I would eat it from the mug with a fork and drink the soup. It was lame. One time, uh, back when I was 15, 13 or 14, I got influenza. And uh, 
whilst we were waiting to find whom had a, a remedy for, you know, the medicine to help me treat the influenza, uh, he bought me this little Bumblebee Transformers watch that you would just pop out of the watch and uh, it was a little Bumblebee and would tell you the time and it was lame. It was lame. And around that same time, he drove for about four to five hours from home to a pharmacy to get me that medicine and give it to me. He would tell me some wild, wild stories I never believed. I never believed them. He would tell them such honesty and everything. And I would be mind blown. Because at that age. <sighs> My dad was born on October 2nd, 1946. On the morning of. May 6th of 2019, he died from kidney failure and a respiratory collapse thanks to sepsis. And before he died, the very day before he died while I was visiting him at the hospital I was reading him the first finished edited chapter of my book and as I was reading him I was just focused on reading it to him and uh, I wasn't really looking at his face because I was just intent on telling it to him because I wanted it to mean something. I wanted him to hear it, to have it. And uh, my mom told me that when I was doing so, whilst people were talking and stuff was happening, he was looking intently at me. Like, he was focusing on the story that I was reading him. And just the day after when I got the call when I was in college and mom told me that he died. Man, that was a day. I was just doing classwork. My phone rings, I'm thinking, hey, his mom's bothering me for some reason. Better pick up the phone. I told my professor, uh, my mom's calling me, I'll be right back. It's, it's in a it was a National University College, and like the professor was really understanding. And so I told him my mom's calling, it's probably something important. Uh, I step outside and I pick up, I tell her, Mom, I'm busy, what is it? I wish the story stopped there. And she would told me something lame, like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I thought you were still on break. And I would have to tell her, no, I'm not on break. And then I would keep visiting my dad every day until he finally got out of the bed. And we would live a life together of him teaching me things. And I wouldn't, you know, be here. Telling you that instead... She told me that he died because of respiratory failure, because of sepsis and kidney failure. <laughs> you know, this is the moment I would be crying. And I am feeling sad. <sighs> but 
I can't. Because I really am sad. Because the man that would spontaneously, every other day, every weekend, tell me and my mom, pack your things, we're going to San Juan to go to a random hotel so that he could go to Best Buy and buy some random camera. And we would have some random experience where we would just go to the go the day to San Juan and then drive back. It was gone. The man that would teach me things that I never knew about cameras and computers and stuff. He's gone. The man that helped me with my English homework. is gone. The man that helped me learn my interests in art and technology and video stuff. The man that would tell these wild stories, these wild Wild stories about how he got in trouble, how he got in trouble with his siblings, how he would do these crazy things. He's gone. The man that I looked up to, the man that when I was four years old, I picked him up at the airport. Not me, you know, but you get what I mean when I picked him up at the airport. And I was so excited because, hey, this is my dad. I finally had a dad. Just a four-year-old little piece of shit. I only got to say, hi, dad. One, I have, I have a, little lame thing here on my notebook that I read at the day of my funeral, at the day of his funeral, I mean, uh. To my father. I never had a true father. I always had parental figures, but never to the father. Until I met him. My father. The only one I ever knew or have known. I met him when I was four. When I entered his apartment in Miami. I recall almost perfectly some of the first words I said to my mom when I entered the apartment. Which were we're not gonna we're not going we're not going back to Puerto Rico, right? I asked her. She laughed. We did go back, but without him. I didn't understand then. But mom had to I told him if he didn't quit drinking for her and me, she would not be with him. She saw what he was doing was wrong, so he quit. For us, for her and me. That was one of the first few things he did for us. Next was buy a house with mom. Then next next was help with my education, which was the best of it. Not buying toys for me or anything, him caring about me. He always said he loved me and that he cared about me. And not just me, his his friends and his real kids. Kids which I valued and looked up to, but mostly him, since he was my father, and he made sure I was always okay. He always made sure we were okay. Even when angry, when sad, when upset, he would always make sure we were okay. And in turn, we did the same for him. Mom essentially poured her life out for him 
giving him the best care she could. And even if I could not be in the same room with him at all the time, I always thought of him. Of you. Dad. So today I don't cry of sorrow, but rather of joy. I cry in hope that you truly are where you belong. Upstairs, rather than down. And I especially hope you're up there with Grandpa. Drinking many cups of coffee coffee with him. And laughing of each of each his own good times. Cause you're cause I know you're not tired to this world no more. I know your spirit is where it belongs. Rest easy, Dad. Love you. I'm only 21. I barely started out my life. I barely started out learning things. Like value of money and the value of work. Don't don't undervalue your father figure. Your true dad. Don't undervalue them. Don't Don't forfeit them just because they did one wrong thing. Don't forfeit them because they made a mistake once or twice. If they are your father, your stepfather, your uncle, or grandpa even in some cases, don't undervalue them. Don't toss them to the side when they... Tell you don't do this because they care care about you. Cause now I won't. I won't be able to do that. I won't be able to hear him say, "Watch out when you drive." I'll be able to hear him say, "Be careful when doing this or that." Watch out for this type of person. Or for him to be able to tell me more stories. Because plenty he told. Plenty I have locked away. Forever. (sighs) Happy Father's Day, Dad. I miss you.